snow white face made of porcelain, painted blue eyes, eyelashes, with curly blonde locks, this beautiful little doll named Caroline has three ghosts fighting inside her, three spirits. Spirits in which they're trying to inhabit her body and all of them are fighting against each other to keep this vessel. She's not evil, they say. And if you hold her up to your ear, she will whisper in your ear and say, make it you, make you. At least that's what the last owner said, named John. Now, as I was investigating this, Caroline, the story of this haunted doll, all of the owners would not come out, you know, not want to be interviewed, not want to be their names mentioned in this article. None of them, except for one, John. And that's all they gave him was his first name. They never gave his last name. Now, Caroline was bought in Salem, Massachusetts in the old time in an antique store. Like most dolls, it's a secondhand doll. And several paranormal groups have investigated Caroline, but like I said, none of them have mentioned their names. None of them have mentioned the owner's names. And why? Why wouldn't they want the recognition of this investigation? Why wouldn't they want the recognition of owning this haunted doll? Is it because they didn't find anything? Or is it because maybe, just maybe, they're too terrified to do it? Either way, I mean, one might think that they are just too scared to identify themselves and they don't want the public to think that they're crazy because they heard this doll whispering in their ear and make it, make it, make what? She didn't never say what she wanted him to make, you know, wanted people to make. Is it make what? Now, with Caroline, a lot of the stories that was with her, they did get, the investigators did get some stories behind it all. Um, there was pens, money, and food in weird places. Okay, pens, they're all over my house. Money, pennies are everywhere, dimes, maybe, quarters if you're lucky. Um, food found. Mm, I have snacks right next to my chair usually. Candy. Drinks. But it even gets worse. Worse meaning she put candles in the oven. Now, was this her sign of it trying to get heat? So she thought maybe that's what cooked the food? Maybe. I mean, back in the old days, maybe she was so old that, you know, in the ancient times, when ancient times, in the old times, um, they cooked on a wood-burning stove. So maybe that's how she thought it heated up the, the food. And how it cooked the food was by putting this candle in and they ran on oil burners and everything else. So, yes, maybe she did. Maybe she thought that way. So, she did put candles in the stove and she messed with the electrical. Lights would go off and on, um, just weird noises and things like that would go on. Because like I said, there was three spirits in her trying to fight over this doll. Now the weird thing is, her last owner, which I said nobody knows who it was, nobody will tell. When she died, at least we know it was a her, when she died, she, Caroline, mellowed out. She stopped all this nonsense about moving things and making weird noises and whispers. She mellowed out. Now, was it because when the person died, the woman, uh, last owner died, that the other three spirits followed it to heaven or followed it to wherever they were going? They needed to leave the present, you know, leave 
Caroline alone, leave the vessel alone and just go follow this last person because every other owner, they never mentioned anybody else dying except the last one. And so when the last one died, did they follow it to the light? Maybe. You know, I would like to look at it that way. You know, this discussion of ha what happened or where happened or if it was true or if these people are telling the truth and they're just scared of not letting their names out for fear that they're going to, people are going to think that they're crazy. Like I said, hmm. life can be like that. I mean, I love haunted dolls and I love haunted things and stuff, but I I am, I'll be honest, I am scared of a lot of things. And when I do these investigations and I look things up on the internet and things like that, talk to people that have lived there around these areas, I do a blessing before. I actually put salt down. I actually um, pray before I do these investigations. And like I said in the last one, in the last video with Caroline, I woke up with a rash all the way across my neck now from ear to ear was it caroline who did that to me or not caroline but was it uh peggy that did that to me it was peggy my last video last friday was peggy and she made me maybe have a rash now i don't get rashes <clears throat> excuse me i don't get rashes normally but I did and see now I'm talking and I'm actually choking kind of same area from where from ear to ear same place excuse me while I get a drink now is that coincidence that I'm talking about Peggy again <laughs> maybe Pardon me. Now, I'd like to think that these dolls don't have that kind of effect, but when you talk about them and stuff, but who knows what the diff, you know, the world will bring, what the unknown is really unknown. <laughs> That's as simple as that. What we don't know, we investigate. And what we can investigate, we still can investigate. Because it's a never-ending story where we can learn things over and over again. Now, like I said, the last owner, um, when she passed away, Peggy started, or Caroline, excuse me, Caroline started mellowing out, and she was last seen in 2004. 2004, so we're into 2023. 19 years ago, 2004. Where is she? Who has her? Is she sitting all on the shelf somewhere in an antique store or a secondhand store? Is she sitting in your living room right now? In a little chair with her beautiful white face, porcelain face, and painted blue eyes, curly hair. Could be. Think about it. Next time you walk into a store and you say, oh, that doll is so beautiful. Look at her face. Look, she looks like an angel. Share some kindness with the world and shine your light for those in the dark. Peace.